If you start spending too much time in the finance industry, something that you're going to come across is the sell side versus the buy side. These folders are out of date. We've already divested. And in today's video, I want to try and explain to you what these two different sides are and what it means in a deal or transaction. My name's Luke. I used to work in private equity, but I'm on my own business startup journey. So if you like this content, please hit subscribe or the like button. It really actually does help out small uh, channels like mine, which are trying to grow. Uh, and as you can see, I need every subscriber subscriber I can get right now. So I really appreciate it and I hope you like this content. Mm -hmm. With that said, let's jump into it. So in a transaction, you obviously have a seller and a buyer. So the place that the buy side and sell side comes up a lot is in mergers and acquisition strategy. This is when a company might want to sell outright, might want to cut out a little business or some other uh, reason for why it wants to sell. I got everybody downstairs generating ideas. You haven't said yes to any of them yet. So if you want to exit your business and you're the CEO uh, and you don't really know how to do it, you're going to go and engage a sell side transaction advisory firm. And depending on how big your business is, this could be kind of just a small medium consulting firm right up to, of course, your top tier investment banks. And this is going to be a lot of the work that you might do if you end up working in an investment bank. So preparing kind of the deal advisory side, looking for comparable companies to analyze some kind of valuation that you might put on this current business that you're looking at or advising on. But there is a bit of a structure to this process. So I guess on the sell side, you can uh, first of all determine how you want to sell the business. What's the process? So you might go to an auction process or you might run a EOI process or something like this. Then you're going to try and attach a value to the business, at least in the early stage. Now, what you're looking for, of course, is to have a value that's attractive enough to get a lot of interest from the buy side. And these are the people who are looking to acquire a business like this. So you're starting to see how the two sides work together. And if you're on one side, you kind of need to understand how the other side operates as well, because that's going to help you understand their thinking and rationale for their processes. So if you're on the sell side, you look at a whole bunch of other metrics, determine evaluation, look in your little black book of contacts and select a buyer universe. And that's basically where you begin the process. Now you might need confidentiality agreements and things like that to help protect the deal, especially if these are public companies and any kind of announcement or anything might be market sensitive and you'd be in breach of kind of your obligations as a director uh, if you do things the wrong way. And that's why you kind of go to these big investment banks that understand the laws, understand the rules with what you can and cannot do. So then you go to to the first round of the sale. And this is literally contacting the parties, getting the non-disclosure agreement signed, sending out an information memorandum, which you've probably prepared and spent many, many countless hours polishing and aligning uh, the formatting on various pages to be exactly perfect. There's probably gonna be a management presentation where investors or potential buyers, I should say, uh, will meet the management team and understand the business as part of the due diligence process that they'll be doing, which I'll get to uh, in a little bit. Uh, and you're also gonna have to have a data room, which is gonna contain things like the financials or management accounts that the buy side analysts are going to be trawling through at the same time, trying to look for anything that might be dodgy, that uh, is perhaps not entirely accurate or misrepresented. So this could be, you know, some sort of accounting principle where you're depreciating something when it's actually uh, should have been accounted for as a cost uh, and deductible in one year. Anyway, that's a little bit technical, but bear with me. So out of all this, you're going to ask at the end of the first round for people on the buy side to submit their bids if they're interested. It, I suppose. And out of that, you'll proceed to the second round with kind of a narrowed down field of participants. Again, this process is not always how it happens. This is just some of uh, the generalizations. It could actually be that in the second round, you do the management presentations or give access to the data room and things like that. But either way, you're sort of narrowing down the field, providing more and more insights into the business. So in round two, you might do a field site visit. So you actually take them around the business, show them how things work. And this is where you often ask again for the the next round of bidding. So this is where companies will have done quite a lot of work by now and they will hopefully have uh, invested quite a lot of money and be serious about their kind of indicative offer. So you're going to receive those bids working on the sell side. You're going to analyze those bids, I suppose, to determine, you know, what's the odds that this person can complete on the transaction? Uh, do they have the financial backing? Do they have the experience? Is this just going to end up falling over at the last minute because they can't raise the money? All those sorts of considerations that, that you can then advise the, whoever it is that you are advising. Then you go into a negotiation phase and hopefully out of all of this you're going to identify the winning bidder so then you advise the business on closing so obtaining shareholder approval if it's required uh, and things like that
that. So as you can tell, just from this quick overview, this is a very involved process, which is why people who work on the sell side are often the people pulling in really long hours. And this is where you're talking about 100 plus hour weeks. These people are also gonna be engaged with lawyers and other various partners who are gonna be also scrutinizing this transaction and making sure all the legal stuff is uh, correct as well. So there's a huge number of stakeholders involved, a huge amount of work to get through uh, and a huge amount of time pressure as well if it's a deal that is uh, sensitive to time frames as well. You can ultimately find yourself in a real pressure cooker scenario. Uh, it is a lot of fun at the same time to be involved in these kinds of transactions, but saying that it's not for everyone, right? So, but this is how it works. All right, so on the buy side, which is where I was sitting, on the buy side, there's a lot of reasons that companies are looking to acquire businesses. Uh, one of them that's thrown around a lot in public markets is this idea that it'll create some kind of synergy. What we need is a meaningful partnership and I know how to find it you'll buy a business that's kind of related to yours. And by doing so, you'll perhaps get access to a uh, vertical or horizontally uh, differentiated business, which we can go into in another video. It's all getting a bit technical in this one, uh, but thanks for sticking with me so far. Hopefully this is interesting. Now, the big thing on the buy side, of course, is that you've got to be able to raise the capital. So as a fund, we already had investors money sitting there, ready to deploy into deals that we could find. We were out there actively seeking deals to participate in and to get our hands on various deal rooms and various different opportunities. In addition to the cash that we had sitting there, of course, we could also use debt. And there's a whole bunch of stuff I could talk about in the debt world. It gets incredibly complicated once you get outside of, I guess, the traditional bank financing space, including things like mezzanine debts, issuing bonds and the likes. Of course, then you gotta think about how it's going to be structured. Are you acquiring the company through shares or are you acquiring the assets? And how you structure the deal, how you acquire the business is gonna have all sorts of tax implications as well, which is way too complicated for this video, I think. I'll just try and keep it simple. But if you do want me to go into those types of things, just let me know. Okay, then you're gonna do your own valuation. So you're gonna scrutinize uh, what the sell side analysts are telling you and kind of come up with perhaps a different approach, a different reason that the company should be valued differently. And perhaps the most detailed and complicated part is trying to draw up the scenarios of what happens uh, once you acquire it. So if you're trying to create some synergies in revenue or costs, you've got to be able to model all of that out into your current business. So you not only have to sit down with the financials that you currently have, you've got to try and incorporate how the new business is going to fit in in that overall picture, which is incredibly complicated and incredibly time consuming. Then once you've done all that, you've got to get everyone comfortable with the deal in the kind of uh, framework of the funds. So this is everyone who perhaps sits on the investment committee uh, and the different various structures of funds and how the deal is going to be structured from a fees perspective. Uh, and once you've done all that, you can put those feeds in uh, working with your legal team to advise you on any contractual terms that might be unfavorable. But ultimately, that's how the two sides work together. One person is trying to sell the business. One person's trying to buy it. Uh, they're both kind of working in tandem to reach an optimal deal where both parties walk away uh, somewhat happy, hopefully. But not always achievable that way. Sometimes you have distressed sales, uh, which can be a little bit more ruthless. But ultimately, I think the negotiations that I've had the most fun working on have been ones where we've tried to reach uh, an outcome that where perhaps we're not both super happy, but we're both mutually agree agreeable that uh, it's a fair deal and we can walk away kind of happy in how it's gone. So in the finance space, there's heaps of other things in addition to M&A that go on. There's things like IPOs uh, and leverage buyouts, which I could talk about as well, if that's something of interest. I'm not sure if people are interested in the finance stuff or just the Excel tutorials at this stage. The Excel videos are doing very well. The finance videos, not so well. So uh, you will really help if you can drop comments, hit the like button or hit subscribe and I'm gonna try and figure out which way I take this channel, whether it's down the finance route, whether it's down uh, Excel tutorials uh, or whatever else people are interested in hearing about my business journey as well. Anyway, that's all for today. Hope you enjoy it and I'll see you next time.